we're going to go over the top five uses for Excel's Flash Fill. At least they're the top five for me. So let's get started. All right, let's say you want to combine two columns quickly. Let's combine the record column in column A and column C, the name. So what you do, you just start typing it out. So one, two, six, five from A2 and Sanchez, Jason, enter. Now, what Excel is going to do is detect a pattern. If it finds a pattern, then it's going to give you a preview of what it's going to pull down. And then you can agree to it by hitting enter. Let's see if it will do it when I type it in the second time. So 2215, Hughes, Eugene. Now, if it doesn't pick it up in the next one, then I'll show you how to force it to detect a pattern. Okay, let's go again. Five, three, two, five. Smith, David. Okay, it's not showing me the preview, probably because I was just testing it previously, so it's not showing me. It might be thinking, oh, you deleted it. Maybe I'm not doing this right. So not sure why, but when you start fresh and new, you will get this preview. Hopefully it will give it to us somewhere along the line. Then hit enter. Now let's say, okay, you've done three of them. Now you want to force it to uh, detect the pattern. And what you can do is hold down the control key and then hit E. So control E in a blank cell underneath um, the ones that you've completed. So you'll see here, it combined 1265 with Sanchez Jason. So throughout you'll notice um, it did a pretty good job. Now you'll still want to quality check. You never just trust anything blindly when it comes to Excel. Um, what I would especially check for are, you know, names with initials. It may not bring over the initials. I don't have any samples here, but definitely you want to at least spot check it to make sure it um, didn't do anything wacky, like pulling in part of the first name or part of the, the record. You just, you know, just go through it. All right. Now let's say you decided eh, it doesn't look that great that way. Now you want to insert new text into it. So let's say we want to insert, let's say a, a colon after the record. So it, you know, it reads a little better. We do that. You know, you want to do a few. If it doesn't work, we'll do it in another column. It doesn't really like it when you keep deleting and testing. Uh, it suddenly loses its mind. So if you're coming up, coming here wondering, okay, how do I fix my flash fill? It's not working anymore. I'm, I'll have to research it, but it's doing something to prevent it from being smart again um, when you're constantly working in that same column. Okay, because normally what it did before, it populated that colon throughout. So I'm kind of glad it's making mistakes because you're probably searching YouTube because something has gone wrong like this. All right, we're gonna hit Control E. We'll probably get the error message, but let's cross our fingers. Okay, here's the error. We looked at all the data next to your selection and didn't see a pattern for filling in values for you. To use flash fill, enter a couple of examples, yada, yada, yada. So it didn't work. So what we're going to do, it, it did work the very first time I did this. So let's just do it in a new column. So let's get rid of these. All right. This will be record name, let's say. You can name the title anything you like. 1265 colon Sanchez Jason. We'll do another one. Ah, oh, wonderful. So you see here, you can see the preview in light gray. And looking through the whole thing, you'll see like in row 24, 1577 colon Wilson Elijah. It's doing a pretty good job throughout. Again, I don't have any middle initials, so you want to, you know, quality check. So if it looks good to you, you can just hit enter and then it completes it. And what's nice about it, it's not a formula. This is standalone text. So if I delete C and A, 
it's not going to affect it. So let's do that right now. Delete. See? No error messages. It's not linked to those columns. All right. So another nice way. Let me uh, get rid of this one so I can have enough space. Okay. All right. So now let's try. Let's say. All right. Let's say you don't want Sanchez, comma, Jason. Let's say you just want first name and last name. So let's give it a descriptive title, first and last names. Okay. Again, you just start typing Jason Sanchez. Eugene, as you can see, it's giving us the preview in light gray. So go ahead and hit enter. This is really nice. This one I really use pretty often. Well, more the reverse when I want to flip it. Um, but if I'm dealing with first and last names of people like in my own department, let's say, or you know my own project, and I, I can live with seeing their first name first, then you can just quickly do it this way and keep both columns, the bo you know both versions. All right, so the next one I like to use, let's say, you don't want the first and last name to be in a single column. Let's say you want them to be in separate columns. So let's call this one first, last. Just start typing away again. So Jason, Sanchez, Eugene, Hughes. And once you put in enough for it to figure it out, Again, do the control E to force it to happen. So you hear David, Melissa, and then you go into the other one, control E. Wonderful. Now you have them in separate columns. All right, so let's now look at with dates. You can actually run this with dates as well. It doesn't always have to be simple text. So let's call this. You know what? Let's not give it a title. Because you'll see one fun thing it'll do is actually combine the titles too. So let's say you want the dates to be in one column. So we'll put column B 514 2022 hyphen for through 911 2022. Let's do it one more time. Ah, you see, we got the preview. I love it. And then hit enter. So you'll see it combine them and put it put in a hyphen. When I did this before, it actually combined the titles and it said date hyphen expiration date. But it didn't happen. So that's one thing you have to keep in mind. When you're working with these flash fills, it may not always operate exactly the way you expect. So thank God for control E so you can force it to happen. Um, other times, if you do control E, it'll still not do it. Like with the colon under the E, when I entered the colon before, it automatically updated column E with that colon, but it didn't do it this time. So I had to create you know a new column in order to accomplish that. So that's everything I have. If you found this video helpful and you have any questions, how you can apply it to your own project, leave a comment below and I'll see you next time. Thanks.